Islam. Okay. Now, all is now being recorded. So, good, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm in here again. Now it's recording time. Okay. Copy for the time. Now, I do believe that based on our discussion last time, you have said that most of the things that uh, for you, the hardest part of those um, activity is uh, um, subject and verb agreement, parallelism, dangling modifiers, and displaced modifiers, and also fragments. So for today, I believe that it's hard for you to digest all of it in one sitting. Uh, if you will digest all of that in one sitting, there will be no knowledge gain. So we will start first with subject and verb agreement and dangling modifier. Now, my dear students, we cannot, I cannot teach you all of the rules at once. You'll just end up having troubles because you need to, little by little, be familiar with it. So there are different tips on how you would understand that. And you could, uh, one of the things that you could do is to take quizzes. Quizzes, 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 quizzes. Okay, so if you, mom, I don't want rules. It's so hard to study rules. Fine, don't study the rules. Take some quiz. You take some quiz online every now and then. Take and take and take. And little by little, check the answer. You'll see, ah, oh, okay. So you could, you could be that kind of person. But there another thing is to review the different rules. So for now, um, there are lots of rules when it comes to subject and verb agreement. But we will just focus on the um, the very few, the basic rules. Because we need to learn the basic in order for us to understand the whole. Okay, so we need to be familiar with the basic. But later and later and later, as, we go, as you go along, you could start studying on your own. Okay, so let us now begin by have uh, discussing the first one. And also, this is an interactive discussion. So I'll be asking you to turn or uh, to chat, use the chat box more on entire presentation. And aside from that, Marinette, all students who will participate for today will be, instead of uh, counting all of the answers, they will all receive plus one with their midterm examination. Okay, so uh, lahat sila magcha-chat dito. Um, this one, my dear students, if you will not answer, tinatamad kayo whatsoever, well, hindi tayo matututo. Okay, so what I need you to do is to read, including my student teachers. My dear student teachers, you will also answer. Okay, so you are in, uh, you need to answer this question so that I could check as well. So I'll be sending the transcript later on. Okay, so let us now begin. Let's start for actually, um, this are for this is also one of the teaching strategies that I use and also very effective for junior high school students. So I realized that when I asked my students in junior high school, back when I was in Central Scholar Integrated School, I, I always asked them, Okay, who wants to answer? Okay, who wants to answer? And no one is answering, only those students who love to answer are answering questions. So I thought of, I think, um, okay, how will I address this kind of issue? What I did is I asked them, okay, class, all of you, every English and Filipino kind, which actually is my subject, you need to bring a whiteboard marker and also your own uh, whiteboard. You could also use um, chalkboard or anything, okay? So what you will do is every time that I will have a question, I will give you at least three counts and you will raise your boards and answer the question. So from before, my, uh, some of my students, especially the students who are very shy, um, they do not have any records for their activity. Wala silang recitation. It's, it's okay for them to just sit there and just observe their classmates even though they know the answer. But when I started using this kind of methods, I realized that even if the students, uh, the, they, they like raising their board, okay? So I think this is very fun for them. And I started using this little by little to you, which is, I don't know if you observe, but this time we will not use voice and any voice at all. Now, 
um, you will just type your answers on the chat box. It is you who will learn. I mean, it is you who will uh, know if you know the answer. Okay, so just type your answers on the chat box. And I tried and I tested this at 3A. They enjoyed the lesson. So for them, um, so bakit ng ulo niya? Nila? But they did enjoy the lesson because they keep on reading and answering the questions. So I hope that we will have the same um, the same thing for you. Again, you are required. You are encouraged, my student teachers, and also my uh, practice teachers. Yeah, I'm CP for my third year students from PA, 3B students, you, Tayo, and also my uh, as student teachers, please do answer the following. Please do participate. Okay? So, let us now begin. Subject and verb agreement. There is a simple rule in subject and verb agreement. Um, the verb must agree. Uh, verb de agreement define, definition implies that the subject of the sentence and the verb of the sentence must be in agreement in number. Which means there are only two numbers in grammar. One, the singular, and two, is the plural. So, that is important thing. In subject and verb agreement, a singular and a singular subject must have singular verb. Plural subject is plural verb. That is the easiest. Kung, kung okay lang. If everything is regular, that's it. But, however, it's not. Hindi siya ganun. Okay? There are different. Let's have an example. The dog is playing with his ball. The dogs are playing with their ball. So as you can see, both action is happening right now. Present tense. It's happening right now. As you can see, the same sentence, but we change the number. So one, there's only one, therefore it is. There's a two dogs, or maybe three, four, five. We don't know. There's no number. So are. So that is the basic principle of subject in verb agreement. So we will now begin with rule number one. So we only have a few rules here. There are lots of uh, um, rules in online, so you can just check it. So when two subjects are joined by and, the verb is plural. For example, my friend and his mother are in town. So you see, and means plus. In mathematics, when we say and, it is addition. It's also uh, the same with grammar. Say you are now um, looking at two subjects, your friend and also your mother. So therefore, it should be R because there are two subjects, in, there are two persons. In. Rule number two, when two singular nouns joined by N refer to the same thing person or same person or thing, the verb is singular. So let us check this example. The captain and the coach of the team has been sacked. Okay, ma'am. Bakit siya singular? Because you are referring to yung captain na, siya pa yung coach. For example, I will give you another example. Uh, for example, myself. Uh, I, uh, for my fourth year students, I am their teacher and their friend. Oh, well, friend. Okay, so my teacher and friend, so you're referring to this subject as they have both, uh, isang tao lang siya, isang subject lang siya. Uh, is teaching us today. However, with this one, with the second one, ang thought niya kasi is the captain and the coach of the team have been sent. So as you can see, we have this duck article which tells us that there are two subjects. Mom, eh, paano ko malalaman? So that is the question now. How will I know if it's uh, the subject is for one and the subject is for, the, there are two subjects? The answer is, you need to understand the sentence. Kailangan mo yung yung sentence. Sorry for saying it in Tagalog, but that is the only impact that I know that you will understand. You need to understand the sentence. These things will only make sense if you understand the sentence. If you cannot understand the sentence, of course, you cannot understand what verb you should use. So this one, again, if, if the subject is, uh, if the verb, okay, so this one, you are referring to one thing, however, two ang description niya sa kanya, you will use singular. But when you're referring to two things, like, ayan na, the captain and the coach, another thinking, bakit ganyan? So, pwede rin kasi na ganito. The captain 
X natin si N. The captain has been sacked. Okay? The coach of the team has been sacked. So two subjects. Two, uh, it could be a different sentence. But this term, the captain of the team has been sacked. And this one, coach of the team has been sacked. Kulang siya. So now we will check. Ah, okay. Another um, thing. Ah, okay. So there it is. The captain and the coach pa. Okay. So yun yung pinikaiba ng dalawa. Number three. Indefinite pronoun. So the pronouns that you do not know how many. So you could uh, check everyone, each one, someone, somebody, no one, nobody, anyone, anybody, etc. are always singular. So for this one, you need to memorize the different indefinite pronouns. Again, it should be everyone, each one, someone, somebody, no one, nobody, anyone are always singular. So you will memorize this different indefinite pronouns. Or you should be familiar. Familiarize yourself. So as you can see, indefinite pronouns, I don't know them. Hindi mo alam kung sino. So it is singular. Okay? So everyone is selfish. So, of course, you need to check the indefinite pronouns, ha? Ano, ano ba yung mga check? Okay. So, another one. Each one is selfish. Each one of our system. So, now, when we're, for rule number four, when the percentage or part of something is mentioned with plural meaning, the plural verb is used. For example, 40 of every 100 children are my lord. Again, when the percentage or part of something is mentioned, with plural meaning of the plural verb is used. Now, as you can see with this one, you are referring to 40 children. So about 40, uh, so you will think, uh, you will uh, visualize this thing. For every four, 40 of every 100 children. So you're referring to 40 different children. So therefore, it is plural. Okay, so you need no number four. Again, you need to think, think, think. Next one, Naman tayo. When the subjects joined by either or, so either or and neither or are both correlative pronouns. By correlative conjunction, yung mga yan. Partner kasi sila. Either or, neither or. So, both, uh, sa either or, it's either. Okay, dalawa siya. Pero dun sa neither, of course, it's no one. Okay? A different person. The verb will agree in the person and number with the noun. Nearest. So, as you can see, nearest to it. Neither you nor your dogs know how to behave. Okay, so this is very good. Now, let us change. It's still the same. Neither the dogs or you knows how to behave. So, pwede yun. Kasi, depende kung saan yung mas malapit. When, again, when we use neither nor, either or, the nearest to the verb is the individual. Either of the books is fine, okay, for math operation. So, same thing. Now, number six. If connectives or appositives like along with, together with, as well as, accompanied by, and etc. are used to combine two subjects, the verb agrees with the subject mentioned first. So, let us check this sample. Mr. Ram. Accompanied by his wife, Sita, and his brother, was banished to the forest. I will give you this type of scenario. Uh, for example, uh, let's check for different names. Okay. For example, Jericho. Jericho, can you turn on your mic? Do you have enough load to turn on your mic? Hello, Do you have enough? Jericho. Um, may I ask, palitan natin tong sentence. Let us say, Jericho, accompanied by his parents, received the award. Sino ang tumanggap ng award? Parents? Jericho, accompanied by his parents, received the award. Kunwari naging Dean's Mister, sino magre-receive ng Dean's Mister? Si Jericho po. Si Jericho. So it means that the rule number six, tatanggalin. Thank you, Jericho. Very good. You have a correct answer. So you can see with this one. Okay. So you can see with this sorry, one. I'm sorry kasi yung charger ko. Tapos tinanong. Tinanong mo. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. So as you can see with this one, the positives are just additional things. 
hindi naman sa hindi siya kailangan, but rather, it's um, additional information for that. Okay? So as you can see, yun lang, yun lang isipin nyo. If ever that you can see with this one, accompanied by, okay, sino nag-receive na award? Parent ko o ako? Sino ba din? Sister? Ako. Okay, so definitely. So that is the rule of thumb. Next, a number of the number of the number. Or a number of some countable noun is always plural. Okay, pag sinabi daw na a number of tapos countable noun, plural ang sagot. Okay? But when we use the number of the some countable noun, is always singular. Again, a number of plus countable, uh, any countable noun. For example, any countable nouns natin. So we have um, pieces, ball pen, okay? So candies, those are countable nouns. Um, this, the answer would always be plural. Kasi you could just count it up. Now, for the number of the sum countable noun, is singular, okay? So let's have an example. A number of students are going on the trip. So as you can see, if you will analyze the sentence, a number of, okay, they will have a trip. Ilan sila? Okay, so you could see, you would imagine that they have, they are five, four, three, seven, ten, ganun kadami. So tatanggalin natin the number of students. Tanggalin na natin yan. Seven students are going on the trip. Diba? It makes sense. Now, let's have rule number eight. Ayun yung lumabas. Wait. Okay. okay. Now, rule number eight. The singular verb form is usually used for units of measurement for time. For example, five gallons of oil was required to get the engine run. So since you don't know... You cannot count it. It's uncountable now. So you will use singular form. Kasi you will think of it is a collection of things. So, so even if 5 gallons, 700 gallons, so you will still have singular nouns. Next, rule number nine. When any of, few, many, several, both, all, some, is used with a countable noun, the verb is plural. Again, when any of you, many, several, both, all, some, is used with a countable noun, the verb is plural. For example, some men are needed for the battle. So as you can see, men here are countable. You can just um, count them. Okay? Some men are needed for the battle. Now, the second question, hey, ma'am, what if it is uncountable? That is our rule number 10. When, any, few, many, several, both, all, some, is used with an uncountable noun, the verb is singular. Like this one. Some milk is spoiled. Okay? So since, ano na naman siya, collection na naman. Uh, collection na naman. So you will use this singular. Now, for our activity for today, first activity, you will read the sentence, you will put a C, I will have 10, 10 questions yan ha. So put a C if the sentence is correct, an X if it is not correct. So I will first project 5 questions. Again, put a C if the sentence is correct, and X if it is not. Okay? So I will check the chat box, all of you, my student teachers. My 3B and also practice teachers, you will answer the question. Okay? So let us now begin with the first five questions. Okay. What happened, Luis? Number one, I can see Luis. Okay, so number one. <laughs> they, have been, they have been waiting a long time. Number two, the pen or the pencil are lost. Someone don't understand. Number four, those has been cheaper in the past. And number five, Randy and one like sports. Okay, one to five. Okay. 
to check natin. Of course, you will check your own answers as well. <laughs> okay, one to five agad muna. Ano di kayo makalito? Wala pa ako nakikita sa critic sa mga student teachers ko, ah. Sarah, please, please, please. Do not copy the answers of your classmates, okay? Okay, let's check. Uh, let's move on with 6 to 10. 6 to 10. These are really special. Number seven, you ride with me. <laughs> Number eight, all of them goes to school. Number nine, Tony likes Mary. Number ten, that movie was awesome. Okay, so six to ten. After this, we will check. And I will ask you if you did understand. I will ask your scores. Shall we check? Okay, let us now check. Okay, Jupiter, thank you. Let us now check. Check your answers, my dear, and later I will ask your scores. Okay, number one, C, 2X, 3X, 4X, 5C, 6C, 7, 8X, 9 and 10, C. Now, I want you to write down your score so that we can check and I want to know where should I. Oh, very good, Eller. You got 10. Marisol, very good. You got 8. Kina, 7. Not bad. 8. Very good. Student teachers, how are you? What is your score? 8. Very good. Irish? Hala, ma'am. 8 lang po. Okay lang yan. 8 is nice. Luis, nine. Very good. Eight, seven, eight. Eight, seven, eight. Eight, seven, eight. Okay, let me see. I think most of you have high scores. Eight, eight, eight. Okay. Eight. Okay, I think it's enough. Okay. Hey, kami na six. Divine. Saan ka nagkaroon ng problem? So, let's take a check. Divine, saan tayo nagkaroon ng problem? Which rule? Hindi ko nasagutan yung six na wala. Ah, okay. Seven. Okay. So I think most of you got the correct answer. Eight po pala ako, ma. Okay. So, it's fine. So now let's have... um. This is actually easy. Pasensya na, no? So I don't have the talent for making a PowerPoint back then. This is for my junior high school class. Kasi. So medyo madali and yet. Okay. So this is actually happy ako lang naman. So well, let's begin with the verb tense for habitual action and universal truth. Don't worry, I will give you the PowerPoint presentation of this one, not just for my student teachers, but also for my students and also some of my... Okay, so to indicate habitual actions, of course, we need to use the simple present tense um, because it means that it is repeatedly done, okay? The action may be a habit, a hobby, and something that often occurs. For example, I often say that I will have, I will go to the gym. I will go to the gym. I am going to the gym. Okay, so you can see that if ever you always say the 
you are habitually saying that you're going to the gym and sort of and sort of go well, every now and then it's also it's a bit one okay the action uh, it also refers to something one forgets or does not do repeatedly like your gym okay pwede yan so yun diet then pwede hindi na ako magiging magasto okay so it's still a habit if not your fear saying that you will not be magastos pero gumagastos ka din habit din siya so of course time indicators ano ba yung mga time indicators natin? We always use always, often, usually, seldom, rarely, never, every Tuesday, every year, every Monday, every Tuesday. So you could use these time indicators. So this is easy for us. So now let's have another activity. What is the correct word for this one? Okay, so just type your answers. We usually pass. Passed by the by the park before going home. Okay, we usually pass passed by the park before going home. What is the correct answer? Okay, so I've been seeing answers. Okay, so let us check. First, the answer is usually passed. Why? Because you have this word usually passed. Now, my family always finds, will find reasons to celebrate even without occasions. My family always finds, will find reasons to celebrate without occasions. Okay. 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 Very good. So the correct answer is because of the always, we will use finds. Okay. Alam ko mali ako dito. Okay. So now, let's begin. Um, the simple past is used to show habits in the past. So it expresses an idea that a habit or an activity repeatedly done and has stopped in the past. So for example, you constantly um, go to the mall. Okay. Because of uh, before COVID-19, you always go to the mall every Tuesday, every after the class, you will go to the mall. Um, what is the mall near to your school? So if you're from San, uh, Santa Cruz, eh? Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz, so maybe some of you are usually go to Pure Gold or I forgot the malls around there. So you always do this, you always do that. But because of COVID-19, it stopped. So that is simple past tense. So time indicators, of course, is always, often, usually, never. When I was a child, when I was younger, again, so many people were saying, when I was younger, I was... Okay, so for example, I usually drank water 30 minutes after eating my meal. So before, so how many minutes do you Okay, so an example also um, to indicate fact or universal truth present tense indicates truth about people and things around us so everything about fact now for the meat of our discussion one of my favorite discussion is this dangling modifiers okay so okay now I want you to tell me if this is correct. While driving to work, a car accident was witnessed on the highway. Type C if it is correct. Again, if you think that this sentence is correct, type C. If not, type X. While driving to work, a car accident was witnessed on the highway. Type C if it is correct, and X if it is not. Okay, the correct answer is, it's not correct, while, because the correct answer is, I mean, a possible answer is, while driving to work, she witnessed a car accident on the highway. Mom, bakit? Bakit she? Okay. So the answer is, let's go back with the first sentence. 
while driving to work, a car was witnessed on the a car accident was witnessed. May kulang. Something's missing. And what's that? A subject. Who witnessed the accident? Is it indicated? No one. Okay, no one. It's not indicated. So you need to uh, know who um uh, what's the subject. Okay? So now another example. Hoping to excuse my lateness, the note was written and given to my teacher. Okay? So is it C or X? Hoping to excuse my lateness. The note was written and given to my teacher. Okay, so this one, this time, magdaming mga. Alhaling sagot, some said it's C, some said X. And, oh, at least Z. Eller, ano pinaglalaban ko? Oh, bakit Z yun sa'yo? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sige, let us check. First, the answer is, it's wrong. Hoping to excuse my lateness. No one wrote an excuse letter. There should be someone who will write the letter. So, okay, a, a, a good um, change for the sentence is, hoping to excuse my lateness, I wrote a note and give it to my teacher. Tama, ma'am, siguro yung Z. <laughs> siguro nga. Okay, tama si L. <laughs> okay. So now, now, ito naman tayo. Ito na yung medyo, you will be. Okay, so you will write which among the following sentence is correct. Is it A or B? Okay, so we'll just write A or B. Walang other letters. Okay, L, no Z, no C, no X. Just type A or B. Number one, letter A. Working on my laptop, the power went out and I lost all my work. Letter B, while I was working on my laptop, the power went out and I lost all of my work. Which one is the correct answer? Okay, let us check. Okay, wala na. Wala na. The correct answer is letter B. Why? The first one, they're uh, working on my laptop. Who's working on your laptop? No one. So, my subject si letter B. While I was working on my laptop. Very good. So now, let's check. Number two. When chicken is defrosted, marinate it for half an hour, and then you will be read. Okay, so, malito. Huwag yung sagutan. It is wrong. Number three tayo again. Sorry. Um, there's a faulty answer. As I was entering the reception hall, I smelled fresh flowers. Letter B. I smelled fresh flowers entering the reception hall. Which one is correct? Let us check. So let's analyze the sentence. The correct answer is, of course, letter A. Imagine if letter B is the correct answer. I smell fresh flowers entering the reception hall. So it, I think this is too early for Halloween, you know? Nakakatakot siya. Imagine, uh, uh, in Filipino, we will always, Bala, ang isang pagita. Parang ganun, you know? So this is a little bit creepy. So we need to... So, okay. Letter number four. When buy a motorcycle, variety... Prices and all the add on options usually confuse average buyer. Letter B. When buying a motorcycle, average buyer is usually confused by variety, prices, and all the add on options. Which one is correct? Okay, so I hope that most of you are answering. Correct answer is letter B. Very good. Next, number five. After you complete your group project, your next group homework will be designing a web page. That is web page, okay? 
Num letter B. On completing your group project, the next group homework is designing a web page. Which one is the correct answer? After you complete your whole your group project, your next group homework will be designing a web page. Or letter B, on completing your group project, the next group homework is designing a web page. Which one is correct? Okay, so let us check. The correct answer is, of course, letter A. Very good. So, our discussion for today is about dangling modifiers. What is a dangling modifier? It is a word or phrase that modifies a word not clearly stated in the sentence. A modifier kasi supposedly describes, clarifies, or gives more detail about the concept. So the first, uh, during your kanina, when we're having an activity, we don't know who, uh, which among the following is being described or clarified. So nagiging magulo siya. That's why we have the dangling modifiers. So we should remove those things and put it into place. A modifier that starts a sentence. What is a dangling modifier? So a modifier that starts a sentence must be followed right away by the word that it describes. So otherwise, the modifier is said to be dangling. And the sentence takes on an unintended meaning. So this is another one. So kanina may So let's check. Um, this is an example of dangling modifiers. So sitting in the desk dentist chair, the sound of the drill made Larry sweat. Okay, so that is a dangling modifier. Why? As you can see with the sentence, sitting on the dentist chair, dapat siya malap. It should be near the subject. The sound. Okay, so the sound, a sound cannot be sitting on a dentist chair. It should be Larry, the dangling modifier. As Larry was sitting in the dentist chair, the sound of the drill made him sweat. So that is the correct answer. Another one. Uh, okay. So uh, this one is another good thing. Okay. Soaring through the sky, Brenda watched the high power jet. So imagine who is soaring. Sino ang lumilipad? Si Brenda ba? Of course not. It is the jet. So the correct version of dangling, this dangling modifier is um, Brenda watched the high-powered jet soaring through the sky. So now, as you can see, this modifier modifies the jet. Yung pala yung soaring in the sky. Hindi si Brenda. Now, uh, okay. okay, this one. Uh, what was stolen? So this one, the stolen man's wallet was placed on the police department. So, bakit siya nagkakalito? Stolen man's. So, ibig sabihin, if you will check, ay, teka, sino, who was stolen? Is it the man? No. Okay. The one that is stolen is the wallet. So, the answer, the sentence must be, the man's stolen wallet was placed on the police department's counter. Okay. So, there are different strategies when you want to revise the dangling modifiers. Number one, name the appropriate or logical doer of the action as the subject of the main clause. So, as you can see, diba sabi nga ni Spock, it is only logical. So, we need to be logical. So, you need to understand. Kanina, when we are discussing about Brenda, is Brenda sorry? No. Is sound sitting on a dentist chair? No, it's not. So as you can see, it is different. Now, this, this is another example. Having arrived late for rehearsals, a written explanation was needed. So, okay, who arrived late? Is it the written explanation? No. So you need someone. Having arrived late for rehearsals, the head coach needed a written explanation. So you need to check for it. Number two. Change the phrase that dangles into a complete introductory clause by naming the doer of the action that in that clause. Okay, so yun yun. Now, let us have another activity. So since alam niyo na sa misplaced modifiers, um, you will again write A or B. The children were delighted by the monkey swinging wildly through the trees. Or... Swimming wildly through the trees, the children were delighted by the monkeys. 
Which of the following is the correct answer? Bilis ka. Very good. A or B? Hmm. What is the correct answer? Let us check. The correct answer, of course, is letter A. Hindi B. Why is A? Imagine the children are swinging wildly on the trees. So imagine that. It's very dangerous. Next question. Letter A. Nawalan daw po ng next one. Okay, sige. Habol na lang siya if ever that she could be. Okay. To become a respected politician, one must administer campaign funds carefully. Letter B. To become a respected politician, campaign funds must be carefully administered. Which of the following is correct or logical? Okay, so different answers now. So let us check. The correct answer is letter A. Why? To become a respected politician, there should be a subject. One must administer campaign funds carefully. Maraming nagsagot ng letter B. Let us recheck the sentence. To become a respected politician, campaign funds must be carefully administered. So as you can see with this one, um, as, as a rule, we should always, we should not forget that modifiers must be placed near what it modifies. So as you can see this one, based on that, to, to become a respected politician, campaign funds, sila ba yung respected politician? Are the campaign funds the respected politician? No. But in letter A, you're referring to one. One could be a subject kasi nirefer ang isang tao. In, in Filipino, ang isang tao, kaya niya dapat. Okay. A human being, of course. Okay? So, check, check, check. Next. Ito na naman tayo. This is one of my favorite. I like to listen to religious music during my diary entries. Letter B, I like to listen to religious music while I do my diary entries. Which among the following is correct? Kaya dito. Hmm. What is the correct answer? Now, let us check. Hmm. The correct answer is letter B. I like to listen to religious music while I do my diary entries. So imagine, kanina, di ba, may isang kapitan dumating. Ngayon naman, religious music na magawa ng diary entries. So you can see, it's very creepy. <laughs> okay. This one, let me sport you a little bit. The set of the crowd team only won the games in the last two years. Letter B. The set of the crowd team won only three games in the last two years. Which of the following do you think makes sense? A or B? Just check. Which makes sense? I think in this section, uh, in this particular um, one, sa kabila, medyo nalito sila dito eh. So let us check if yung sa inyo may lito kayo. Okay. The correct answer. Very good, students. Okay, most of you got the correct. All of you got the correct answer. The step of the crowd team won only three games in the last two years. Okay. This one. Letter A. Without a plan for the weekend, we decided to like uh, to take in a Sunday mulling. Letter B. Without a plan for the weekend, a Sunday mulling seemed a good idea at the time. Which among the following is the correct answer, A or B? Okay, let us check. Of course, the correct answer is letter A. Very good, students. Without a plan for the weekend, we decided. Why? Dito sa letter B, a Sunday morning. 
Um, can a Sunday morning decide? Of course not. So, it's letter A. Now, let us have misplaced modifiers. It is a modifier that is not located next to or as close as possible to whatever it is modified. So, as you can see with this one, this, we have an example. Um, after jogging for two hours, the view was seen by Jimmy. Or, the view was seen by Jimmy after jogging for two hours. Which among the following is correct? O, lagyan na ng suppose letter A or B tayo. Which among the following is correct? After jogging for two hours, the view was seen by Jimmy. That's letter A. And letter B, the view was seen by Jimmy after jogging for two hours. A or B? Okay. My dear students, check it. After jogging for two hours, the view, see, see ba yung ano, yung nagja-jog? Hindi. The view was seen by Jimmy after jogging for two hours. Let her be very good, Grishel. Hindi A. Nagja-jogging ba ang view? Hindi naman. Okay, so you will check. Kasi hindi ba dapat, ang sabi, the nearest, nearest. Okay. Ay, nako. So, eh, talaga, gulo na tayo, no? Okay. Stop again. This what? Rotten and smelly. The neighbor sold cheese to mom. No. Letter B. The neighbor sold rotten and smelly cheese to mom. Ali kaya dito yung rotten and smelly? Ali kaya dito? Let us check. Ayan, medyo na ano kayo. Talito daw kami niya. Okay, so the correct answer is letter, anong letter siya kanina? Okay, letter B. Ito yun, ito. Namali lang ako ng placing. It's my fault. Um, the neighbor, letter, sa so tama, letter B is the correct answer. The neighbor sold rotten and smelly cheese to mom. Hindi naman si neighbor yung rotten and smelly, okay? More wishing that it's not the neighbor. Okay, so that's very gross. Next one. Please give the table... With the brass inlay designs to Mr. Cruz. Or letter B. Please give the table to Mr. Cruz with the brass inlay designs. Which <laughs> one? Okay. Let's check natin. Be logical. <laughs> okay, na iba na ang sagot. Okay, so let us check. Correct answer is letter A. Natawa naman ako sa like sagot ng B. Okay, please give the table with the brass inlaid designs. Yung table, yung may brass inlaid designs. Hindi po si Mr. Cruz. Sa letter B, please give the table to Mr. Cruz with the brass inlaid designs. It's like you're saying na, ayun si Mr. Cruz yung may brass inlaid designs. So very fashionable naman pala si Mr. Cruz. It's not. It's the table. The table is the one that has a brass English design. Okay. Let's look for, let's have the handsome men. Handsome men are love. <laughs> handsome men are love. Okay, na ko talaga Sorry. Okay. Handsome men are loved by wearing very chest. Okay. Sorry. Hindi ko talaga siya kaya. Eh, which among the following is hairy? Is it the man or the woman? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, the correct answer, of course, is letter uh, letter B. Kasi handsome men are normal. Okay. So it's normal. Uh, <laughs> Salamat, Evelyn. Okay. So imagine naman the women having a lot of hairy chins. <laughs> <laughs> sorry na, sorry. Okay. Ay, nako. Kanina ko pinaghandaan tong sentence na to. So, just imagine, ano, uh, if for example, nagkalito like, dito ka, tapos ganyan. Okay. Wait lang. Okay. Scanning modifiers, <laughs> na, na all hairy, okay. It's sometimes called a two-way modifier. Okay. Medyo mas nakakalito ng konti. This error occurs when a modifier 
Yes, I know, Michelle. Uh, that there uh, that there are hairy women. Yeah. Kasi talaga na feature ko yung parang orang gutan. <laughs> okay na ako. Sorry. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, so screen modifiers na tayo. Screen modifiers na tayo. Okay. So, for example, this one. Um, <laughs> okay. What you often hear, you will believe. So, this one, um, it's a little bit uh, confusing. Because what you often hear, you will believe. Medyo na nakakalito siya. So, you could put some comma. What you hear often, you will believe. Okay, so this is that one. Okay, let's have another one. Um, let's have A or B ulit. Okay, hindi na siya nakakagawa. Kuryoso na tayo. A or B. Instructors who cancel classes always are reprimanded. Hmm. And instructors who always cancel classes are reprimanded. Ay, parang pareho. Pareho nga ba? Is it true? Which among the following is correct? Okay. Let's check. Um, letter B, tama kayo. Uh, instructors who always cancel classes are reprimanded. My dear students, this is um this is a good thing about ito yung it's just a positive side when it comes to online classes. At least if the instructors will cancel their classes, it's um it's not so expensive. Because before when when we were in face-to-face uh, -face classes, some instructors will cancel classes, and some of my classmates came from very, very uh, far place. I mean, san, sayang lang. So, it's not that good. So, I don't like that. Okay, so that's all for our discussion. So we still have five minutes. Um, did you understand our lesson? Yes. Five yes. yes okay. Sorry. Sorry, yes. Sorry. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Sorry, I know. Okay, so let us see. Um, when we this, when we have these different dangling modifiers, it's hard for us to. It's easy only if we will be. Uh, I don't know about that. If we will just check the meaning, okay? Just check of the logical order. Okay, so then, okay. So I hope that you understand our lesson. And by the way, for my students who's asking for different teaching strategies for grammar, it is better if the students would experience this type of things. Kasi nakakatamad kapag diniscuss mo lang. So as you can see kanina, di ba, yung sa isa, discuss mo, discuss mo yung rule, wala siya lang ginagawa. Nakakanto. So this one, is, uh, I think, for me, uh, this is tried and tested that the students would feel it. Yun nga lang, tama yung sabi. Some of the students, they said, mamalakas sa data. Yun lang ng problem. Pero at least, this would be easy pag nag-demo kayo kasi it is student-centered. Most of the teachers now, they say that they it's better for, have, for them to have student-centered. Okay, so do you have any questions? None po. None po. Okay. Did you uh, understand our lesson for today? Yes. yes.